Hi guys, Lindsay here with Storybrook Family Farm. So as you can tell, we got some snow. Um, I actually am a super huge fan of wintertime, which seems kind of kind of comical because of the fact that it does make raising animals a lot more difficult. But maybe it's because I'm a February baby, I'm not sure. But I have always loved winter. Like winter is my all-time favorite season, which I assume for most homesteaders, it is their least favorite because you can't garden. It's harder to take care of the animals, but for me, I just, I love it. Um, I still love going sled riding and doing all those sorts of things and making snow angels and playing in the snow, but also like the beauty. This hemlock tree is just, it is absolutely gorgeous. I love looking at um, the beauty that the natural world has. I think that it is like far better than what most humans could ever create. Um, like with how it looks whenever there's the snow that's just barely like on the branches and stuff that's on top. I just, I think it's so pretty. Um, it's nice too to actually walk around this homestead and like look at everything and just go, oh my God, it is so beautiful. Um, for those of you that don't know, we bought a major fixer upper um, about nine months ago, almost 10 months ago. And it's been an eyesore everywhere that you look and everything that you do, it's just, everything needs work done on it. Um, that's how we made a good good investment in our future was buying a place that was the ugliest house probably in the township um you know definitely not the worst in the county but it's the worst on the road probably the worst in this town and probably got the worst in the township so i mean yeah but it is very nice to see it and to view it all as just being a place of you know immense spectacular beauty and stuff plus i love the snow i think it's just absolutely gorgeous um but so we haven't stopped getting snow. As you can see on camera, it's still snowing. Um, we've gotten, we had about an inch or so on the ground before it started snowing again yesterday. And since then we've gotten probably about three more inches. Um, so we've got probably in some places four inches, some places about three, depending upon the drifts. So we're slated to get about another inch of snow today. And then next week it's gonna warm up. So I'm really, really jazzed to be able to spend a little bit of time in the snow because even though I live in Ohio, we used to get snow all the time when I was young. Um, now the winters don't have very much snow, um, which kind of kind of is a bummer because you know a lot of kids they don't they don't know how to play in the snow, how to you know go sled riding and skiing and sled boarding, you know doing snowboarding, doing all the things that I grew up doing and loving. A lot of kids that live in the same area as I grew up in, they don't have that opportunity because the snow doesn't stay for long enough. Um, just like we've had this brutal cold snap happening. But on Monday, the temperature is supposed to be 35 degrees and rain. All next week, it's supposed to rain. So it's going to be, we're going to be back to having a homestead completely covered in mud. Um, but I have taken advantage of the slight warm up that yesterday and today has brought. Um, so we did actually move Wilbur and Ferdinand, our uh, intact male and his companion, back out of the barn. Um, just because of the fact that it was getting very cramped in there. And Ferdinand is the lowest of the pecking order for the whole entire goat herd. So other goats weren't necessarily all that loving towards him. So I kind of felt bad for the little guy. But it is what it is. Out here, he's, you know, number two and stuff. So he basically gets treated like a little king because um, Wilbur is his dad. So he's always, always been a daddy's boy and has always been pretty well protected by him. But um, so yesterday, I actually, from what we've heard about this place... Um, previous owners used to secretly grow marijuana in this barn, which makes sense because all of these windows were completely painted out black. So I had noticed while all of the birds and all the extra animals have been in the barn, that it is so dark and depressing in there. So yesterday I took it upon myself to actually scrape all of the paint off of those windows to let light in. And it makes a huge difference. Um, so today our son, he had a snow day. He's 16 and he's not a very observant type of fella and stuff as most teenage boys are not. Um, when he walked in to see if I needed help with anything, um, he was like, oh my God, it is so bright in here. I'm like, yeah, like that's what the sun can do. So it was, it was nice that he, you know, noticed and stuff like that, especially that he noticed right away. Um, so it was very, very affirming that doing taking the time to do that in the cold temperature was definitely a worthwhile investment. Plus, since doing that, we've gotten a couple more eggs laid. So that was another motivating factor for doing that. But um, 
I'll bring you guys in so you can see how all the animals are doing. Plus the snow plows going down the road and that's kind of, kind of incredibly noisy. So when I talk about how tiny our barn is, it is about the size geese are in here. It is about the size of a living room. It is very small. Here are the noise makers. But, so, that's it. I just walked you guys through the entire teeny tiny little barn. Um, so we do plan on actually making some changes and some tweaks and also some sort of expansions as well to it. I gotta walk away from the ducks. They're too noisy and distracting me. Um, so over here where there's some windows, those over there, I actually put them in before we moved any animals here. So then that way, cause that's where the chickens are housed at, um, which they pretty much just live all over the barn. Um, but so that way they would let more sunlight in that side of the barn because it was so dark, you couldn't even see to do anything in there. And I did add the wall to separate it. And I got two little goats trying to stick their head out through the chicken coop door there. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that on camera or not. But, um, so yeah, how it is, is one half is for the goats, the other half is for the chickens, um, and the ducks and the geese sleep in that nighttime. So I did find, this property had a lot of trash on it, which, um, you know, some of it's been recycled, some of it's been scrapped, most of it has just been thrown away. Um, but I did find, once it started getting cold and kind of crappy out, um, sorry Winston, I didn't mean to scare you buddy. Winston is our most skittish goat. He was trying to pee and I walked by and I startled him. But, um, so I did find over here, right along the property line there, is a old trailer. Um, so I actually am going to, once it's not so, like, frozen-y out, um, I'm planning on pulling that out. It is not seized in place, but the tires are flat, so it's going to be pretty pretty much a booger to get it out of there. I might have to wait till spring so I can get the lawnmower hooked up to it to try to use that to yank it. But I'm actually planning on building a duck and goose coop on that. Um, because the ducks and the geese, they normally actually live over by Wilbur and Ferdinand. That's one of their paddocks right there. We do try to rotationally graze them. So we have three little paddocks set up for them to be moved around at and stuff to make it so it's not quite as muddy all the time in all the places that they're at. Ducks create a lot of mud, so do geese. Um, but so I'm planning on building a little movable coop that's going to set right over in here. So then that way the ducks and the geese are out of the barn, which will free up that whole other side. Cause as of right now, that first room that I walk into when I walk in the barn is primarily where all the chickens actually sleep. There's a two by four rafter that's, you know, 10 feet up off the ground. That's where most of the chickens actually sleep. Um, so it's only, I think I have three chickens out of our approximately 30 chickens, only three of them sleep in the actual coop now because the ducks and the geese have pretty much laid claim to it. Um, so that'll free up half of the barn and essentially make it so there's like an addition in there, which will be great for when the goats start having babies in May. So then we can separate the mamas off and the babies off. Now you guys can see this broken down, falling apart structure here. Um, that I'm going to take off the rest of the way because it's, you know, clearly not really salvageable. Um, at one point somebody had chickens in there, I assume, based on how it's designed. It looks like a little tiny chicken coop. Um, so I'm planning on taking that all off and probably building like a, like a lean-to structure over here, but not enclosing it. Like the other side of the barn over there has a lean-to already built onto it and it is enclosed. It has a floor and all that. Um, I am planning on building one here so then that way we can store things in it like excess hay or firewood because we do heat with wood or equipment um, because right now we have to lift all of our like uh, rototillers and all that stuff up into the lean-to addition that's over there so that way it can be tucked away and stuff and out of the elements so it's kind of kind of cumbersome to have to lift small rototillers thank god they're small um, <laughs> but uh yeah, so I'm planning on making those sorts of expansions to the barn, so then that way there's a lot more room. And since I got the shed cleaned out, um, I'm really excited because then a good part of what is in the lean-to now, um, which there's like a table, there's some shelves, it's like a, ooh, the snow's really coming down, hit me in the face. There we go, that's better. Um, there's like a, like a workbench table in there and some shelves. 
um, and just like odds and ends little like workshop type stuff in there already um, along with our extra feed and our hay. Once I get the workshop stuff out of there and put into the shed, which is going to become my workshop, um, then that'll actually give us a bunch more room um, so I can create kind of like an area for when we're hatching out birds because right now we have chicks, well, we have eggs in the incubator um, to try to replenish ones that were stolen from the falcon or by the falcon, I should say. Um, so right now I am planning on trying to, in the next week or so, I would do it now, but the uh, shed doors are frozen shut. So, and I can't really, can't really use a torch or anything of that sort to try to heat them up to thaw them out because, well, the shed's made of wood. So that would be bad. Um, but, so once it warms up, I'm actually going to try to get the lean-to cleaned out some so then I can actually set up like a pen for, um, like raising the little chicks out once they hatch in, I think it's in like two weeks, 17 days. I think there's 17 days left on the incubator um, for the little, little bantam chicks to be hatching out. And we have like 41 eggs in there. So, I mean, it, it's it's a good good bit of chicks that are potentially going to hatch. Um, so that'll definitely be nice if I can get that space set up in the next few weeks so then we can move the birds into there. Because um, it's very noisy and kind of stinky when you have to raise chicks in the house. We've done it numerous times. When we first moved here, it was the first, I think, four months we had a continuous supply of young birds being hatched out and raised in the house or that we had bought young chicks of some sort like ducklings, goslings, um, and then baby turkey poults. So we had a whole bunch of baby birds constantly in the house and it was just, it was a nightmare. And then we also hatched out a bunch of quail too. So I mean, we spent a lot of time in this house with having baby birds. Hello, Lucky. What's up, buddy? What's up? You want to see yourself on camera? There you go. Look at how handsome. Ooh, my handsome boy. Um, so doing those two things are going to make it so that way we have an incredible lot more of space for storage. That's been our biggest complaint with this property is that there's not enough space for storage, especially um, in the house. Um, with homesteading, you naturally accumulate a lot of stuff that you kind of need to store um, because like the incubator, it takes up space, but you're not going to leave it out all the time and stuff or like jars or cooking stuff. You don't you don't get rid of that stuff. You, you use it on a regular basis, but it's not enough that you're going to, you know, make a dedicated space in the kitchen for it. Um, so hopefully with switching things around, rearranging things um, and reconfiguring different things, we can then make it so we have essentially a lot more space to store things and to try to raise animals at um, just simply because we absolutely love having animals. Um, that's turkey lurkey. Might be tomfoolery. We have two. They are identical. I can't tell them apart. Tracy can tell which one's which, but I can't. There's a slight color difference in their heads. Um, so I can't tell. But um, so that'll make it very nice for us to be able to raise more animals here because it is only two acres of land. So we need to figure out how to get creative to raise more stuff in the small space. Um, another thing that we've discussed frequently is actually expanding the goat paddock area back here. Um, just because, yes, Lucky, you are very, very cute. You're very cute. Your face is all cold and wet from the snow. Um, because we do have three of our four female goats. They are pregnant. Um, so we are going to have more goats back here. Um, we do intend on selling the goats, but for the time being, we need more space. Um, so we have talked about expanding the pasture out that way a little bit further. Um, probably just pushing it back 10 to 20 feet. Um, and then we can also go up the hill into the woods to try to expand it further that way if need be. Um, moving it that way will be a lot more complicated just because we'll have to try to, it's going to be some crazy fence lines to protect all of the trees from the goats because goats love to eat the bark off of trees. So that'll be, that'll be definitely something to consider of which way to go. Um, as for chickens needing more space, the chickens can fly. So they just hop right on over their four foot fence. Um, this area right in here is fenced in just basically to keep the goats from entering the little chicken door because when we don't have all the extra animals in here, um, that chicken area, the goats can't get in there at all. Um, so in that way the chickens can have them get access to their feed all the time instead of right now. They're only getting it in the morning and then in the evening um, while we have the goats blocked out of that part of the barn. So it just kind of does make chores more difficult right now with having everybody in the same space. 
but everybody has been a lot happier. Um, and like the turkeys, they could all go back to their area at any time right now. They have no interest to. They really like it here. Um, so it was kind of kind of a nice treat for them because they were they were free ranging for a while until they decided they didn't want to stay on our property. So then we had to start locking them up because I don't want somebody else to take our turkeys. Not that I think our neighbors would, but you know, it could be a bus going down the road runs one over, or a delivery driver, or you know, a coyote or something like I just. When you have livestock, it's your job to keep them in and keep them protected. So we take that very serious here. Um, so this area that is their pasture, that is the goat's pasture, it is probably actually like, I would guess, probably about like an eighth of an acre. Um, so it is ample space for having so many dwarf Nigerian goats, um, along with having the chickens and stuff running in, in and out back here. It is plenty of space, but we just, we'd like to have more space for them and then have different things set up in the future that they can jump on and climb on. Um, and part of my cleaning the property up, I actually have found some old tires. And in the past, the goats paddock before had some tires in it and they really liked playing on them. So I'm actually planning on this week when everything's not frozen um, to get the tires out and actually throw some of them in here so that way the goats can play on them and stuff. Um, and I might build some cool stuff out of pallets. What do you think about that luck? With some pallet stuff, OJ Castle to play on. Oh, that'd be fun. Um, so part of the fun part about having goats is actually watching them play. I love to watch them jump and gallivant around. And um, where we were living at before, there was an old broken down lawnmower in the pasture, and they used to jump on it and climb on it and leap around and headbutt each other off of it and stuff, play King of the Mountain. And they just they would play on that thing for hours a day. So I wanna. I want to try to make it so they can have more fun back here because um, right now all there is is like a couple small stumps for them to hop up on and it's just it's not as much fun as they they want to have so definitely definitely want to make them changes um but yeah i think that's i think that's about all of the expansions that i have planned for the barn area um you know and then we do also plan on further expanding the garden, maybe building a greenhouse before the spring season starts, but that might end up not happening until like next fall. I'm not sure yet on timelines, but yeah, lots of big plans for this place um, to basically just see how much our little two acre homestead can really produce for us and how much it can provide for us. So if you guys are enjoying this content, please give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends on social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to help us grow. Lucky would greatly appreciate it, and so would I. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.